Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble. We go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, let me be very dignified in announcing that the person who is currently with us is the king of comedy, the <laughs> joker of jest. Uh, the uh, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. I don't know why. Yes, half a sl- That's a good uh, thing we can talk about. About what people. What do you, you use coffee to get up in the morning? I use. Co- I get coffee right here now, and this is not even the morning any longer. You know. Yeah, I've never had coffee in my life. Really. I tasted it once, and it was so horrible I couldn't take it. But I, I, I like the smell of it, but the taste was just horrible. I'll tell so. you, I, I didn't like coffee until I, uh, when I was in San Francisco and was at KMEL, they had a coffee machine. And that's when I first got used to coffee because I, I realized you don't have to drink it black. You know, it's a vile brew, black. But you yeah. add your sugars or your sweeteners. And you add some uh, milk to it, and it's it's really very tasty, you know. But I could never really? drink this without that stuff in it. No. Uh-uh. And it seems like uh, the way you see people line up at Starbucks is almost like a methadone clinic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's true. Starbucks, you know. I mean, you know, Marge hammering on the door at five. <laughs> yeah. M- m- yeah. <laughs> write your own line about how you open I have cash yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it seems to be kind of it does seem to be kind of an addiction so I don't know but it's I guess it's kind of healthy for you so who knows well it is an addiction uh, uh, you know but I mean I uh, I don't know if it's an addiction with me I don't drink it every morning when I'm not on when I'm not doing something I don't have a cup of coffee but I, in fact I have one cup of coffee I make and I drink about maybe a third of it, and then I put it in the refrigerator and use it the next day, warm it wow. up. Yeah, yeah. So I sometimes I've gone with the same cup of coffee for like three days in a row. So I know people out there yeah. thinking I'm weird, but I'm not weird. I'm strange, but I'm not weird. Yeah, but I guess I get my caffeine from the uh, Diet Coke. So. That's where you get it. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I was addicted for years to Diet Coke. But I don't do that anymore. I use a seltzer, but flavored seltzers like uh, uh, what's the one I use here? What's the one I have here? Let me hold on a second. Ice, it's called sparkling ice, and uh, I just found a new flavor. I love coconut pineapple. So, yeah. So that, yeah, those are good. I think I've tried those. Yeah, I I buy them by the by the casefuls. Yeah. And uh, the coffee I do when I'm doing a show, like when I'm doing this interview here, I just had to make a cup of coffee uh, so that I'm, you know, perky. <laughs> yeah. You're known for being perky. Yeah. But, uh, well, I had to get up early today. You see, I, I don't like to get out early simply because my legs are weak when I first wake up. You know, I, my body isn't completely awake. Uh and not that it ever is these days, but for the you know I like it awake for a certain amount. So, Marjorie and I have been trying to get her onto my bank account because she's never been part of my bank account. In case I I drop dead tomorrow, she has access to it, right? So I mean, we go down there the other day and we had to wait an hour for somebody, and finally it turns out this Bank of America uh, branch, which is the Harlem branch. Bank of America. They only had three people working the whole place and people waiting in line to see somebody. Nice. Right? So he said, well, you should get down here earlier in the morning. So this morning we decided we'd go down and we got there about 11, right? 
just packed. And still, yeah. just three people. And I asked him, I said to him, this is Bank of America, folks. I want you to know that. Because I do want to give them a bad time about it. This is the Harlem branch. And he told me, he said, we used to have a couple, we had another person here. He said, but then they moved him to another branch and they didn't replace him. And I said, could that be because this is the Harlem branch of Bank of America and it's a certain amount of racism? He says, well, I'm not saying it, but you got it. Really? Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that that that, that was the deal with them. And uh, I, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm really mad about it because, uh, you know, it takes me a little bit more to go down the street to the bank than it used to. I now use a cane. Uh, not that I can't walk, but I'm afraid of falling. And so the cane gives me a sense of security. I don't know. I've never fallen with the cane, so I don't know if it would really help me if I finally decide to fall. But that's why I have it, right? Well, the first thing I've learned is, to, I'm telling you this now. Listen to me, Larry. It's, it's a, something you should know. Take it to the bank. You will thank me for the advice. Go to, like, Amazon or someplace like that and buy a cane. Now, you don't need a cane right now, do you? Uh, not yet, no. But here's why you need it. When I'm with the cane and I go into a bank and it's just a lot of people in there, everybody's sitting down, they've got a chair to sit in and everything, and there's a line, people always say to you, oh, well, go ahead of me, please. Somehow, ah. the cane is a hall pass. Very nice, yeah. And and I don't need it. I mean, I could walk from here to the bank without the cane, but I would feel insecure without it, okay? That's the only reason I'm using it. But because I'm using it, people go, oh, here, have my seat, you know, and I have to tell them, no, I'll stand, you know. But everybody, because you've got a cane, that's an immediate hall pass. Isn't that wonderful? See? Yeah, well, that'll work. So, so. Go, go out and buy yourself a cane. Just just tr buy a cane, try it for one day, and see how people react to it. They they react to you differently, you know? Where before they go, get out of my way. I was in here first. When you got the cane, oh, you've got a cane. Oh, oh go ahead of me, please. Yeah. yeah so I'm happy to use well. the cane, even when I don't need it. You ought to threaten B of A with a lawsuit over that. That would get them moving, I would think. I'm thinking. Well, I'm calling them and telling them that you know that it's it's disgusting what your your practices. In that this is a bank that if you've got there were about eight people waiting, okay. If there are eight people waiting, then you haven't really supplied this bank with the manpower it needs to take care of the traffic it deals with. Uh, and uh, so they should do something about it, but they don't do anything about it. Same four, three people, one one a teller, okay. The other guy I don't think is a banker. He refers to the other person as a banker. And then he's like, I don't know, he just he's a gatekeeper. But we went down the other day, see, to get her, in, you know, uh, put onto my account, and we almost completed it. But then he said, we can't get access to your Social Security because you asked that it be blocked. So she had to go home and had to call, I can't remember who it was, Experian or somebody like that, and get them to unblock it. So we got it unblocked. Oh, you got, you've got a freeze. Yeah. Uh, you can put a freeze on your Social Security information, okay? So she yeah. uh, she had to sign up for Experian and take the block off it, it defaults to a block if you sign up it defaults to a block so you have to unblock it so she unblocked it and we're good to go so now we're going to go back to the bank to finish the transaction something that should only take five minutes five okay? minutes right uh yeah and we get down there and there are all these people and i said well, we're back we just want to finish that thing and she says um he says well i'm sorry you, you got a whole line in front of you and I'm going, but we're just finishing something. You asked us to come back and finish. He said, well, you should have got, you should get here earlier in the day. And I'm going, what time do I have to get here? You told me to get here 
you know, around 10, 10 30, something like that. He said, it's about a quarter of 11 now. And look, he says, well, I can't do anything about it. You're going to have to wait like everybody else. Wow. And I'm going, you know, in most, in most places they would say, oh, yeah, you were here the other day. Come on in. Let's just finish this thing off. Okay, goodbye. Next. You know, but that's not the case. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, thinking, of, I'm thinking of changing banks, to tell you the truth. I would. Nothing works smoothly. That's... You know, and I've got this Anything. I got this, this ton of money coming in, and I'm thinking of not putting it in this bank. I'm thinking of putting it in another bank where I can actually see an officer of the bank. But I went across the street to Wells Fargo. Right across the street is a Wells Fargo, okay? And I wanted to see how many people were waiting there. Nobody was waiting, but I couldn't see that there were any bankers there either. So, yeah. you know, I mean... And I, I got to say, it is racist that they think, "Hey, oh, this is the Harlem branch." You know, it's yeah, known screw as that, branch. right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you know, we don't we don't need Negro money. Yeah, so, it's it's, uh, it's so that's my argument with Bank of America. Where do who do you bank, bank? Who do you bank? The with? banks in general. I've got Wells Fargo, which is a terrible reputation, and. Uh, well, Bank of America isn't much better. No. Have you noticed, and I don't know that you deal with the rest of the world like I do, because you're kind of a hermit there, but mm -hmm. do you notice that services that you need are just really poor these days? Horrible. You know? Everything. Everything. And I, I Techn Technology is not making things work quicker or better. No. No, absolutely not. But I mean, I just find that it, it it's kind of horrible all the way around. I mean, yeah. every, everything we try to do, it's like you know, like this going to this bank. It, it shouldn't be a problem. I should go down there. Hey, I want to see a banker. Okay, fine. I want to put her on my account. Fine, you know. And there could be ten other people waiting, but they've got enough human beings to handle the traffic. But if the traffic is that bad every morning at that bank, then Bank of America should say, well, we need to put a few more bankers in that bank. Okay? But they don't care. They just don't care. They don't care. care but, uh, yeah, people should be, I, you should leave that bank. Yeah. But, I mean, this goes through to everything. You know, the other day, uh, I've been having a problem with uh, Hulu, which is, a, you know, a online, you know, one of those... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, one of those services, one of those apps. Okay, but I get I get I cut the cord about a year ago, a year and a half ago, and that's where I get all my TV and stuff like that, all my local stations and whatever. I pay ninety nine bucks a month for the service, but I get all the you know I get all the stuff I would have gotten with cable. All right, so um, which is preferable, by the way, because. With cable, you get 400 channels. How many of them? Like, you can get 400 channels on your cable, right? Do you have cable? I didn't know that many, really. Jesus. Yeah, you, there are 400 there. Um, but how many channels do you watch? Most people probably watch five or seven. Maybe not even that. I think we'd only watch two or three. You know, so to you cut the cord and just do it over your over your internet is the best way. Of course, you don't have high speed, so that's not possible. But no. Uh, but anyway, uh, um, I uh, the problem was with Hulu for the last couple of, about the last week. Uh, I couldn't get it to hook up every time. We would say looking for bandwidth and whatever and so on and so forth and they can't do it blah, blah, blah. so finally I call Hulu to tell them what there's a problem and you know it wasn't that I was calling for them to solve my problem I was calling to inform them that something was wrong with their service on Roku so that they could do something about it so they could talk to if it was Roku's fault then it was Roku's fault but they could talk to Roku I could not get this woman to understand. She said, well, well, let's start your system again, and let's start. And I'm going, I know, I've done all that, okay? <laughs> I, I know technology probably uh -huh. better than you do, okay? I've done all the things I need to do, and nothing has corrected it. 
And I said, I'm just phoning to let you know. And she says, well, let's try uninstalling it and then re... I said, Don't, aren't you listening to me? I've done all that. And I, it was the most excruciating experience I've gone through in weeks, you know? And, yeah. and, and it shouldn't be. It, the person on the other end should understand that when I'm saying, I don't need your help. I need a, you to go out and talk to Roku and get this problem solved with them because there's something between your program and whatever. Well, this morning, everything seems to be 100% okay. Apparently, overnight, they fed a new program from Roku to update the uh, whatever, and, and we're fine. But it was maddening with these people at Hulu, this woman whom, I don't know, she spoke English, but I don't know where she was. Um, but she doesn't know anything about the technology. All she look at, she has a little book there. She has a thing on her on her on her computer screen, and that's all she's answering. So you're not even getting people who can solve your problem anymore. You know? No, I, uh... I mean there was a time I remember when they had uh, uh, tech service at most of these companies, and you would call somebody like I don't know uh, Apple or whoever, and you would get somebody immediately who was like a geek who knew how to help you solve your problem. And, and I don't know if you remember those days because you may not have had that much technology in your life, but that's the way it should be. And it isn't anymore. It's simply some guy in India who's looking at a, 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 a manual on his desktop uh, that he's reading from a screen and if, if he has to go through certain procedures that he doesn't even know why he's going through those procedures. I mean, it's just, it's insane that you don't get service anymore. And I think we should, right? That's what no, we're a service economy, but no service. I mean, what do you do? You're paying for these services. Part yeah. of that service should be help when it goes bad. And part of the service I should get from a bank that I've been dealing with for the last at least 20, 25 years is that when I go down there, hey, if it's something simple they got to handle, then just put me the head of the line, get it done, and let me go. But no, mm -mm. I'm the same as anybody yeah. else sitting there. And they all happen to be black people that were waiting. So you can tell that this bank is not perceived. Yeah, I think they've got a really good uh, shot at a uh, suit there. I would say because I think it's absolutely racist. Uh, oh, so, absolutely! You know that they. Well, it's classist. Let me put it that way. Oh well, the uh, Harlem. Uh, they don't need more people. Those, those, uh, those coloreds up there. They'll. Uh, they're they're used to waiting. You know, and I mean, they were waiting, and they were didn't seem agitated by waiting. But God, don't I have white privilege anymore? Jeez. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, no. But I mean, it just I just felt sorry for them too that they had to wait. Sure. You know. So anyway, so and and so you don't like Wells Fargo either, right? They're no, they got a bad reputation, and then uh, I think all the banks are. Some of the banks now. I, I saw this. Uh, if you if you like take two thousand dollars out of your bank, they say, "What are you? What are you? Why are you taking it out? What are you going to buy?" Really? Yeah. No. Apparently, standard practice in Canada. If you take uh, three thousand dollars out, they you. Why are you taking this money out? What are you buying? Really? Yeah, and it's. I think it's happening here too. Well, but what is the reasoning behind that? That you might maybe you were dealing drugs or something? Yeah, I guess. So uh, it's none of their effing business, whatever it is. Hey, if but, I've got if I've got five hundred thousand dollars in an account and I want four hundred fifty thousand of that, it's none of your goddamn business why I'm taking it out. Exactly. Maybe I want to move it to another bank. <laughs> that has people working at it. I never heard anything like that before. Oh, yeah. I'll see if I can uh, find it out. I saw it on the news. Because I'm planning on buying some pretty big ticket items, and I don't want to have to tell them. I mean, if they ask me, I'm going to tell them none of your goddamn business why I'm taking my Yeah, money that'd be out. great. See what happens. But if you take a big amount of cash out, you're going to probably get some questions. 
Wow. Wow. I, I Okay, I give up. You know, that's, that's absurd. Uh, I don't understand it at all. It's uh, nice know. living in a third world fascist hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what's happening. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's just terrible. It's just terrible. And I mean, I mean, I don't go out and do a lot of stuff lately, and I'm sure I would have a ton more stories about lack of service. You know, uh, mine is basically, I always have a, a, a fear that like something goes down and I have to call GoDaddy, who is my provider for uh, uh, tech services, you know, for the internet and so on, and my website and so on. And my fear is that something goes down and now I've got to call GoDaddy. So, I mean, immediately you get somebody. That's wonderful. And they say, what's your problem? And you give them, tell them what your problem is. And they say, well, I can't really handle that. I'll have to turn you over to uh, a higher level of tech or something like that. Every time. Every so time. So why do you take that first call? Just wait until those <laughs> other guys are available. You know? But no, I mean, it's you get, well, you got to talk to me first. What? You're the gatekeeper? You know? Uh if I can so you get to explain your problem to three different people. Well, I hate referring to GoDaddy as my provider because it sounds like I'm referring to a god, you know. <laughs> my provider, you know. But my provider has a gatekeeper. I guess that's uh, who's at the gate, pearly gates. Uh, who, who's the gatekeeper at the pearly gates? I can't remember now. Was it St. Peter? St. Peter. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be St. Peter. But that's Christian. I, we don't go along with that. So there's no gatekeeper at our... At our uh, yeah. <laughs> Pearly gates. <Yeah. laughs> I just remember when I was a kid, heaven always sounded very depressing to me. <laughs> well, I mean, my question is, I mean, if you're, if you're a party person, do you really want to wind up in heaven? Or would you rather have flames licking your ass and having a good time in hell? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, boy. Wasn't that a twilight zone? Or have it, hell turned out to be like a place where it was just really boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I thought I was, I think it was something like I thought I was going to hell, and they said, you are in hell. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and everything was just really boring and dull. It was like a twilight zone or something like that. Yeah. You know. sure. um, probably but, sitting in a Bank of America, probably. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I've never... Do you, do you believe in God? Uh, no. No. Yeah. I, I don't believe in God either in the traditional sense, you know. I I don't I don't have this concept of some guy sitting up there on a cloud with puppet strings on me, you know. So I I yeah, you know, and I really get bothered by people who are like they're playing baseball and they hit a home run and they go they slide into home and they say praise God. Yeah, but God had nothing to do with it. God's not watching a goddamn baseball game. He's more concerned with what's going on in Gaza. You know, you get enough trouble ev elsewhere rather than to make you have a home run. Oh, yeah, it's very annoying. Thank the Lord for that. Oh, well, good for you. You know, I just never understood that. But I mean, uh, we, we can talk about the God concept uh, next time. That would be okay. Yeah, that would be very good because I want to get your concept of what God is. But uh, we got about a minute and a half left. Are you playing anywhere that people should know about? <laughs> not, that enough be, people, uh, not that enough people listen to this that it, it'll get you a big yeah, crowd. Yeah, uh, you know. May 9th, I'll be at the Netflix is not a joke festival in L.A. for one night. So. Yeah. And how much time are they giving you? Uh, Ten minutes. And I'll probably ask them, can I do five? <laughs> Well, wait a minute. I'll have to ask you that too. What do you do in ten minutes? Oh, that's I can, I can a lot of stuff. That'll probably be fifty jokes, I would guess. Yeah, because you're a one joke guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it works for you, but geez. Yeah. And if you told to do twenty minutes, you do a hundred jokes. And if you told to do uh, right. thirty minutes, you, you do one hundred and fifty jokes. 
Do you have it's that David, money? Do you have that? Yeah, money David there? Letterman would do. They said David Letterman. They asked him, "Hey, you do? You're up? You're doing 20 minutes?" He always said, "I'd rather do 10." <laughs> he, just, he just didn't like it, and I understand it. Well, well, anyway, Bob's always a pleasure talking to the uh, king yeah. of comedy. King, <laughs> well, Rupert I, Pupkin. I was once called the king of comedy in San Francisco. King of San Francisco you were. comedy, right? And I'm no, I no longer am, so I have to pass that mantle to somebody else, and it's you. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm about the only one left here now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I win by default. Yeah, that's, that's Larry Bubbles Brown. Say goodbye, Larry. Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that was Larry Bubbles Brown, and I'm Alex Bennett, and uh, here we are, and way online to do the show tonight, one person. Wow, why do I even do <laughs> I, I say this every time this happens. Why do I do this? Why do I show up for it? If you don't show up for it, why should I show up for it, you know? Anyway, hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, it's a, a Friday. And uh, hold on a second. I, got, I, I brushed my teeth before I came in here, and now everything I <laughs> would brush. And then I do, what I do is I brush my teeth, and then I do Listerine because I feel that really does almost better than flossing, okay? And, uh, but the problem is then I come in here, and little pieces of stuff are still coming out from me having uh, used the Listerine. Anyway, that's the way I do stuff. That's the way I roll, folks. That's the way I roll. Well, now we have two people waiting. Uh, uh, yeah, what the hell? Let's go here. What the, what the hell? Um, hmm. Oh, well, we do actually have more people than that. We actually have, uh, we have first of all, Charlie Wallace, who's uh, always waiting to get on here, and I appreciate that. And uh, the same is true of Jeff Stein. Hello, Jeff. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've got a problem. Yeah. Okay. And Tom Yamaguchi. Hello, Thomas. How are you? I'm doing fine. I just felt a need to come on to uh, celebrate a little bit of an anniversary. A little bit of an anniversary. Is this one in which I'm involved? This is one in which you are involved. Okay, let what me. You, what? Uh, you tell you. You know what the anniversary is? Well, I'm. I'm. Big, it does it concern you as well? Not oh, really. Oh, really? Oh, okay. God, I thought you. It definitely say, concerns you. It, uh, yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to say maybe this was a, a couple of years since I got was made a, a member of the uh, Hall of Fame in San Francisco, the Bay Area Hall of Fame Radio. Well, that was a. Th that was that was later. Oh, okay. So, but oh. uh, 20, 20 years ago, I started at Live One Hundred and Five. No, twenty years ago. Twenty years ago, that would make it uh, two thousand and four. Yes, two thousand and four would mean that I was probably. Did, I didn't start Gabnet then, did I? No, that no. was after. Because that was that was like the end of uh, what was between. <laughs> what was between? Oh boy, what was between me getting let go at at uh, at uh, uh, Sirius XM and starting Gab? Before you got let go at Sirius XM, what happened for you to get let? You couldn't have let go unless they started. You started a program with Sirius XM, right? Or actually serious. Yeah. Today's the twentieth anniversary of your your program start you're, at Sirius. You're very very good. I you see. Maybe that's something I want to blot out of my mind. I don't know. I hope not. I hope <laughs> not. That was, that was really great. I unfortunately I was not there. That because was because I could not afford a serious radio. Oh really? But, oh, okay. But but you had, uh, I found out about it because I was on a, uh, a news group called BA.broadcast. Right. Uh, yeah. 
and you announced that you were starting your show on uh, Sirius uh, on April 19th, which was a Monday. Yeah. And uh, and I was all bummed out because I was broke and couldn't afford a radio. <laughs> but then in, in the intervening months, you were able to persuade Sirius to do uh, an internet broadcast. So you and Lynn Samble, Samuels became the first serious broadcasters to do an internet radio broadcast. I'm trying to remember that. Yeah. How did we do so that? There was a live internet stream mm -hmm. of your program and Lynn Samuel's program on Sirius, right before it was Sirius XM. Mm -hmm. And I was listening. And then that was coming to an end and I still was broke, but I said to myself, if, I don't know if you remember the uh, Gilbert Shelton's uh, fabulous Furry Freak Brothers. Right, right. Well, the old line was, dope will get you through times of no money better than money will get you through times of no dope. <laughs> and so I came up with the conclusion that Alex will get you through times of no money better than money will get you through times of no Alex. And I went ahead and bought a serious radio. <laughs> <laughs> I started listening. I think it was in the fall. Late, actually, I think it was August of that year. See, if I had and known you, if, if, able if, to listen. if you had gotten a hold of me at that time, um, uh, if you had gotten a hold of me at that time, uh, I probably could have gotten you a free radio. Because actually, what, what you did is what what we did was you had a friends and family deal, mm -hmm. and you said okay. All you were listening to are obviously my friends and family, <laughs> so I'm going to share this deal. So I got a uh, I got a cheap radio thanks to your deal. Oh, okay, all right. But yeah. you see, I mean, I I actually in those early first early days that I was at Sirius XM, they would allow us to have free radios to give away to friends. Uh -huh. You know, so like I gave a girlfriend one. I had we had like two or three of them. There was a limited number. Right. Um, but it worked yeah. out for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. whatever. So, uh, this is an anniversary. I guess it is. You know? Yeah. Uh, what Congratulations. Can, what, what can I say, folks? <laughs> you know, this is the uh, the best I can do. The best I can do, folks. The best I can do uh, <laughs> is come up with this afterwards. Uh, because we're coming up on uh, an anniversary for this, I believe, in the end of May. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I've been working on like uh, new pro, you know, new it, what we call imagers. You know, the imagers are the things we we do that go like. Uh, now in its ninth year, this is Gabnet. That's an that's an imager. Right. And I have to change Speed them box. all because that says the ninth. So I've kind of changed them in a way. Uh, I have one version that goes now in its tenth year. And uh, now in its first era, uh, so uh, we'll, we'll be we're getting those together in time. But anyway, well, good to see you again tonight, my friend. And on this, on our anniversary, or my anniversary, yeah. Um, and we lasted there for what about nine and a half years, I think it was, maybe yeah. a little longer than that. So you know, but I've been away from there for over ten now. So. Yep. It, it, it's it's hard to believe that time passes that fast, and um, you know I uh, eh, what the hell you know <laughs> so um, and uh, hello there uh, my favorite childhood memory is my back not hurting yeah. <laughs> isn't that true mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah the yes. does your back hurt you um, yeah I've had. Two back surgeries and three ruptured discs. So yeah, really. Hurt. Now was that how? How did you get those? Uh, I I got the first one playing frisbee on the side of a hill. And ruptured the disc. The second one just happened. I was walking. I went to the bathroom at a restaurant and I was walking back to the table and my disc just slipped and. Next thing I know, I'm waking up in the emergency room. So, wow. And the third one happened when I was playing softball, when I was trying to act like a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what you get for playing sports. Yep. 
Like, uh, you know, Marjorie is uh, 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 a real, she was a really sports-minded person. She loved doing everything, you know, running yeah. and jumping and, I don't know, pooping in ditches. I don't know, all those things, right? And, uh, but yet she, all of that took a toll on her, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, she's got the world's worst back uh, and the world's worst husband. So how's that for, uh, you know, <laughs> having a, a twosome? Uh, but, uh, you know, it was uh, was quite a, quite a deal there uh, with her back. And I used to say, you know, I used to say to her that everybody told me, oh, you got to be sports minded. You got to go out and do a lot of exercise and things like that. And I said, everybody I know who did that had wound up having back problems or knee problems or this problem or that problem. I said, I'm in pretty good shape for my age, you know. I mean, I get back aches now. Uh, but, uh, you know, if I take an ibuprofen or something, it goes away and that's it. So I don't really have any skeletal problems. Uh, but they, they can be terrible. I mean, Marjorie's was terrible. There's a great video I have of our trip to Europe a few years back in which she started out just having a backache and wound up having to use crutches and wound mm -hmm. up having to be taken by wheelchair onto the airplane. I remember you had video of that. Yeah. And I mean, it just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Uh, and uh, just over that vacation, that's why I'm afraid to go on another vacation with her. That was the last vacation we took in Europe. Mm. Then we went to China. China was fine. She didn't have any problem in China. But by then she had already had an operation on her back. So that kind of took care of it for a while. You know, so. Anyway, hello there, Alan. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you, Alex? Uh, I'm doing uh, moderately well. I heard you, where did I hear this, that you're getting your money? And maybe you said it last night. You're getting your money next week. Yeah. You'll be able to relax. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I've been waiting long enough, and I keep waiting and going, am I going to get this in time for me to be able to enjoy it, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because of all my little problems of tiredness and walking is not as good as it was and so on and so forth. But just put me on a boat and float me down a river. You just, know, yeah, get a first-class thing. Have a limo pick you up, take you to the plane. Fly, you know, if you're going to Europe, you can get on these private jets that only hold about 16 passengers. I don't, I don't want to do that. I have, uh, I have uh, uh, on uh, United, I have like 39, 390,000 oh. flyer, frequent flyer miles, which I understand will just get me to Newark. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does anybody know about this mileage crap? I know that the, a lot of the airlines have cut back on how much, you know, I, you need more mileage to get more. Although you might be able to, you know, I, I'd contact United, but once you decide where you're going, but what you might be able to do is buy a coach seat and get an upgrade to business or first class round trip for you and Marjorie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'm going to look into it, but I, yeah, I went to the United Airlines um, uh, 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 website. And that makes no sense at all, you know? So I'm just thinking of calling United. And then they'll probably say, please use our online service. <laughs> oh, yeah. And when I go to a certain point on the, on the United, it completely crashes. Yeah. And these are people who update their, their uh, app about every three days. <laughs> and they're probably thinking, if we do this enough times, eventually we're gonna get it right. My phone crashes a lot less often when I take the apps that I never use off of it, which I did a couple of weeks ago. I had Southwest Airlines, which I used to fly from here to Vegas. I had United, I had American. I took all these apps off. You can always put them back on. And That's my phone is working great again. It's, it runs quicker, smoother. You know, it's true. I really should get rid of most of my apps. I only use two or three of the apps and that's it, you know. Uh, yeah, I use my bank problem. app. Okay, yeah, your bank app and Pornhub. What else do you need? Yeah, you don't need anything else, <laughs> except maybe somebody to jerk you off. But I can afford that now. That's right. That's <laughs> well, you know, I um, 
I was saying today, um, my old friend Buddy Love is visiting us here, <clears throat> and I was saying that I really kind of thank God for Shecky, you know, that through his thoughtfulness, mm -hmm. uh, our later years are going to be just fine, you know. Um, we're we're going to go out and spend that money as fast as we can because somebody, also I was asked tonight, well, why don't you invest the money? And I, I said, well, I, I, you know, I said I would invest it if I was 60 years old or 50 years old right. and then yeah, live, on the, live on the live on the on the interest. Mm -hmm. OK, that's fine. But I'm 84. Marjorie is 80 and we have no kids and nobody to leave our money or our stuff mm -hmm. to. So why shouldn't we just spend it like crazy? You know, sure. I mean, what's the sense of, of, of sitting around saying, oh, well, I have, I'm, I'm living off the interest. Yeah, for as long as you're going to live. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, Jeff. But you got to understand, if, if you got a, a substantial amount of money, and you can't spend it every day on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, Thursday. guess what? He's going to break that rule. I'm going to break that, that rule. Every day. <laughs> yeah, but you're you, you're gonna have a lot more that you that you don't need every day, so you at, ought, at least put it in some kind of a place that would give you six percent or three percent. Who something. gives you six percent anymore? Go I ahead. don't know. You, you know, if I take if bank. I take all that money and I put it and I say to the bank, uh, put make make sure my uh, savings account is an interest bearing account. Absolutely. Do you know how much I will get every month on, on that yeah, money, which is quite substantial? Maybe $3. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, so it, 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 it makes no sense at all. You know, I mean, at my age, um, uh, like, for instance, I'm going to build a new studio here. You know, I'm going to uh, uh, upgrade uh, this, uh, this uh, Apple machine I've got here to, to a very, very powerful machine. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, be able to do a lot of things with it, and maybe new microphones, things like that, you know? Nice. What the hell? And, and that in and of itself will still leave me with so much money I can't even begin to tell you, okay? Uh, so uh, why don't you send it out to your regulars here? <laughs> uh, I was going to say, you know, we, we'll be glad to get, Enjoy your money. I, I don't need your money. Enjoy your money. <laughs> Well, I'm giving a, a nice little chunk to my business manager. I, he's been nice. so good to me over the years that I want him to, you know, have nice. something to, to, to take part in my good fortune. But the thing that was, I just, I said to Buddy tonight, I said, you know, I really thank Shecky, you know, because he's made our lives now much easier than it would have been. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we Is any have... of that money taxable? No. 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 Nope. No. Nope. No, it's a will. It depends on the state, but you know, like California, it's not. Not here it's either. Federal, federally, I, not federal either. And the, tax, well, I just got a big inheritance a few years ago. No taxes. Well, the tech tax is already paid, right? Uh, paid by Checky, you know, by by yeah. his by his by estate. estate. By oh, his estate. Yeah. By his estate. Yeah. yeah. So that all the people who get uh, get the money, it's tax free. Right. You know. No taxes. Tom, I'm writing down your last name to make sure I got it right in case I die before you. I'll send my, my money to you. It's Y A M A G U C H I. The first name, I, my legal get, first name is Thomas. My middle initial is F, as in Francis. And, and you're in uh, Russia, right? <laughs> no, I'm in Berkeley, California. I know where you're I'm at. For, Nine four seven one zero. Well, well guess who? Guess, we guess, never know, but guess, statistically, yeah. you're a little older than I am. So, guess who? You know? Shecky, yes. Guess who? Shecky. My mother's ninety, and I'm sixty-five. My sister's seventy-two. Oh, I word and we, age my sister so. and I both think that that my mother might outlive us. <laughs> yeah, I'm seventy-four. Youngster. Okay. Yeah. All right. I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, well. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's talking okay. about taxes on it or something. I don't know. No, you, uh, yeah, we, well, I yeah. mean, the, the taxes on it are, uh, it, it's it's a wonderful thing about, you know, an inheritance is that the taxes are usually paid by the estate. 
uh, after the person dies. And now they've but already- You've got to inherit like $11 million before they start taxing you on it. E yes, you can. Over $11 million of inheritance, yeah. you have to pay taxes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't yeah. Know it. yeah. And I don't think anybody in the near future is leaving me $11 million. So. <laughs> Not even I got that much. What's up with that? Listen, I'm, I'm glad that Checky didn't leave me more because I wouldn't know how to spend it. I wouldn't be able to get rid of it in my lifetime. You know? There's lots of charity out there, Alex. Yeah, well, there are charities out there, and I've been thinking about that. You know, but I would have to get later on down the line where I figure I'd, I'll never need it. You know, if I suddenly find, you know, if I suddenly find I go spend all this money, right? It's all gone. I blew it on hookers and <laughs> dope and cheap, hey, cheap you know, cheap movies or something uh uh if i did all of that you know and then i still had money left over and i found out i was going to die in a week and a half i would give it to charity or i would do something very nice with it for somebody N <laughs> none of you are those people however <laughs> thank you all right well, no, so, no i mean i have uh, i have yeah. several people i would love i would like to leave the money to if if need be you know bill meyer donald yeah. Trump. um no i'm not going to leave the money to phil meyer because he'll just go out and waste it on, yeah on crap <laughs> he makes good money and he enjoys spending it on himself oh. so. do you That's make that much money oh it. by the way by the way speaking of rugs which is what he does if you want the most entertaining thing you can watch on youtube and believe me, I'm, I'm telling you this ahead of time. There are a series of videos, maybe many of them, which are getting over a million views each, of people cleaning rugs. Okay. And these rugs are so filthy, you can't even see what's on the rugs. Yeah. And when they clean them, the initial uh, outpouring of what's in there is pure mud. Okay, so they get rid of the mud part of it, and then you slowly start to see what's underneath, and it gets brighter and better. And it, I got to tell you, you will sit there fascinated by watching this thing because it has two factors in it. Very easy factor uh, that uh, these people are doing something, they're cleaning something, and something's getting cleaner and cleaner, and you just emotionally you feel better about that it's just really strange just go on to youtube find something one of these things cleaning rugs just go rug cleaning or whatever mm -hmm. and just start watching one of these i swear to you one of some of them are 25 minutes a couple of them are 40 minutes long you will watch them all the way through we were watching some tonight here in the house with, uh, boy, with Buddy. Oh boy, and, you with, get, with, with I hope you get that money soon and with, get a light. With Buddy and his <laughs> wife, and and he knew about it. And we sat here and watched them clean a rug. And we were all just fascinated. We didn't even speed the thing up to see it get, you know, do it faster and faster. We just watched the whole thing. Oh, there's, there's less mud coming out now. There's less dirt. The water isn't clean yet, but we're getting there. You know, and sure. boy, next, it's, the, it's next, so cathartic. The, the, the next thing you'll want to do is watch people clean toilets. Uh, <laughs> I like watching the women's softball games. On. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I'll agree with that. Women's softball games. You know what I, I used to like watching? I think I still have them on YouTube. Uh, women in bikini shooting guns. Oh, yeah, they're still out there. To yeah. Me too. yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. There's nothing like a woman in a bikini, a woman full formed in a bikini. Yes, yes. the kickback. Shooting a thing. machine gun. Okay, yeah. all right. And I don't like guns, but boy, that's entertainment. <laughs> I used to run it on the TV show when we were doing the full TV show, right? You remember that? that, uh, that that's right. Yeah. That's right. I remember those. They were hilarious. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and you don't like guns, right? I don't really care about women in bikinis, personally. Yeah, well, that's because you are of another persuasion. <laughs> I'm of another persuasion, but it was fascinating. Y yes, absolutely. How about guys in Speedo shooting guns? We could yeah. do that. Well, that might work. 
<laughs> there you go, Tom. That might work. Yeah, yeah. It's probably out there. Yeah, I'm sure it probably. is. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, but there's an, there was another day in court uh, for our boy Donald, uh, and they got three. What three more? Alternates, so they only have two alternates to go, if I'm not oh, mistaken. Okay. Oh, that's I a think nice. They had all their alternates. What? I heard that they had all their alternates. Oh, did they? Yeah, they were heard. Heard. probably would. So. Well, that would mean that Monday the trial will start. Yeah, Monday the trial will start. Yeah. And some guy set himself on fire outside. Well, that's the thing. They said, now was he, which way was he? Was it left yeah, that's what I'm or was he right out. winger? If he was a right winger, I don't care. Right. <laughs> well, I think he was just very mentally disturbed. He, well, so. it, it, no, do tell. I mean, you, you set yourself on fire. You're not exactly, you don't have everything all together. Well, actually, you know, uh, there were a number of people during the Vietnam War yeah, who did, did set themselves on fire and found the Pentagon. One of them was a Quaker. Well, also, and, uh, also. I would say they were very rational and uh, they were definitely uh, had, had a message that they wanted to deliver regarding the war and and, yeah. and it was inspired by the uh, monks right the buddhist uh, monks know. in vietnam there's who, gotta uh, be set themselves on that. fire to protest the the war the the, the war in vietnam as well right did right. they hand out mushroom uh, uh, well, not mushrooms but uh uh what you, I can't think of the name. marshmallows so you can you can cook them over the fire. <laughs> well, I re I remember those, and I remember some Americans doing it as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But yeah. that was for the Vietnam War. There was a slightly different urgency to that. I don't know why this guy burned himself. Yeah. You know, in front of Trump's trial. What? What's the purpose? Mm -hmm. What are you protesting? Yeah. He couldn't get the Trump T-shirt off. Trump for president. No, I don't know. We don't know what, I, where, where I don't, he, he was an older guy, he right? He was like 81 or something. No, he was 37. 37? From, from St. Augustine, Florida. I get everything wrong. Theory. I never pay attention to the news. My brother on. called me, Alex. They said they had everything roped off across the street from that. Well, no, yeah, they rope things off. Answer. What's a crime scene, so they're going to rope it off. But anyhow, what... What do you know about it, Tony, other than his age and where he was from? Well, they, from what I heard is he's 37. They said he's from St. Augustine, Florida. And he sounds like a conspiracy nut, Alex. He sounds like a Trumper, really. Like he had pamphlets that he was giving out. They confiscated it. But it was all like like the deep state, I bet you, all these, you know, all the stuff he propagates, Trump. Mm. It's definitely a trumper. You can maybe just... there was a page in the pamphlet that showed how to set yourself on fire. Well, in um, that case, in that case, no loss. No, exactly. <laughs> Get the marshmallows out. I mean, another, you can't make I, this up, and you can't make it up how crazy they are, really. Well, I mean, another uh, Republican, another Republican. I I can't think. Congressman of... is quitting. We, another. No, no that was the original majority. They only had a one seat majority. That's well, right. Another Republican. Yeah, I read it in yesterday's news. I forgot about it. Yep, I should have looked it up again. Yeah, you know, there are a lot. I think there are a lot of Republicans who are fed up with the way the Republican Party is going, and they don't want to be part of it. You know, uh, it would be nicer if they stuck around, yep. and then did something about it and voted. You know, mm -hmm. a, against things. Um, the guy in there, Maybe what's his name? Use Kennedy instead. What's his name? Johnson, the uh, Mike speaker Johnson. of the Mike Johnson, speaker of the House. Hmm. He's been kind of interesting the last couple of days because he's standing up against uh, the Marjorie Taylor Greens and the Matt Gateses by mm -hmm. saying that we have to pass this thing and we have to get money to Ukraine. It's essential, and you wouldn't. And he's risking his, you know, his position. Oh, yeah. uh, in Congress by doing that, and this is a guy I thought was pretty much an asshole, but I'm beginning to think slightly differently, that he has some principles, which he makes him a bad Republican, actually, if you have principles. Mike Gallagher from 40 years old, uh, he's been swatted, and he doesn't like it. He fears for his family. Smart guy. What do you mean he's, he's been swatted? He's a House of Representatives from Wisconsin. 
Oh, 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 the guy who, who quit. Oh, okay. From Wisconsin, yeah. Quit. I wonder I wonder if he's leaving immediately. I hope so. <laughs> well, why don't you stick around and at least vote positively on stuff, yeah. you know, yeah. rather than with these, uh, these morons. Another mm -hmm. rising star in the Republican Party. Yeah, but he'd lose all of his, you know, he's got a, a cushy job with industry. He'd lose that if he voted against what they wanted. He voted against the impeachment of uh, Mayorkas. Yeah. Mayorkas, yeah. 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 That no was going to go nowhere yeah. anyway. It was just ridiculous. They even wasted their time. Get on with the people's business, okay? He's leaving. He's leaving this month, mm -hmm. and that. And Charlie's mm -hmm. right. It'll make it a fifty-fifty split. Yes, Tony. Yeah, you know, I'm glad Tom is on tonight. I was going to ask you this, Alex, too. And since Tom is there, I was reading on Nixon. I could not believe this. Do you know, you probably know this, and Tom Kyle most definitely knows it. Do you know in 1974, he was trying to propose uh, universal health care? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we knew that. I could not, I never knew that. I almost did a double take. I was reading his whole thing on No, I mean, there was Were you thing, alive at that time, Tony? Yeah. I was one five. Of, yeah, one of uh, Nixon said his regrets was he, he came close to working with Ted Kennedy on a, a universal yes. uh, health bill, and it didn't happen. Nixon created the EPA. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's how different Republicans were in 1974. I was, I was going to say, Charlie, I was like totally amazed by, like, he at least he was a forward thinker in that sense. I was like, wow, I never knew that. Well, I mean, the thing is that, that um, uh, you know, we compare Nixon to what's going on today, and Nixon was almost a godsend. I was going to ask you that. Actually, you're right about I that. I mean, there it's were a, things that Nixon compare. did, such as... He was the president that went to China and opened up trade yes. and everything with China. Yeah. You know, got rid of that Cold War thaw. Uh, there were things about him mm -hmm. that were positive. It was just that uh, he could he could steal a victory, uh, steal a victory away from himself. When it looked yeah. like he was going to win something, he would have to do something to screw himself over. Yeah. You know, he did I'm that. That sounds like Trump. Well, no, that yeah. no, that he did it when he was in uh, in college. Went to Whittier College. You were saying, and he um, he was going to, you know, it was graduation time, and he wanted to see in most desperate way where he was going to finish in his class. Oh. Yeah. And he broke into the dean's office Ooh. and found the list of the people and who would finish first, second, third, whatever. Mm -hmm. He was first. When they caught him, they almost didn't let him graduate. Yeah. So that it's was a perfect. Like there's there's no there's very little <clears throat> difference between that and what went on with Watergate. Okay. Yeah. Again, yeah. it's taking something you got you got uh, you got a slam dunk on, and you yeah. go in and you screw the whole thing up. I mean, he was a guy who defeated himself constantly. Yeah. constantly. Have you ever seen him in person? I mean, you know, we know he's dead, but he when he was campaigning in San Francisco, I went to watch. And he has a hat, an enormous head. You know, it just, it, it, it really stood out. And I, I don't know if that's extra brain power or what. I mean, in my case, it's I'm fat, but but he had, he had, he had a really big head. That's not that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well Alex, I, I remember, I actually, it. I wrote a, a, a guest column for your blog on uh, Nixon nostalgia because there are a number of people looking back at, um, at the, the, different ideas that Nixon had under what he called his new federalism. And mm -hmm. one of them was a guaranteed uh, annual income. Uh, you know, in other words, or or, uh, or also known as a, a negative income tax. So in other words, if if you didn't make, uh, a, you know, up to the poverty level, the federal government actually paid you. Oh. To you know, gave you money to, to bring you up above the poverty level, and yeah. that was a Nixon idea. He, he had some forward-looking ideas. Yeah, and really another did. idea he got through was was called revenue sharing. So you know the mm. the federal block grants, you know that that the the, uh, the federal government sharing money with local governments that have lasted through the decades. That was a Nixon idea too. So 
So, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I'm not going to say Nixon wasn't a bad guy because he really kind of was. He was kind of skeezy. <laughs> you know? like, yeah. But um, he had some good ideas. You know, in he fact, yeah, I mean, I, did have some, in some fact, form, you know, you got to go back. You got to go back to Nixon's history and you find nothing but just absolutely disgusting stuff like his uh, running against Helen Gahagan Douglas. Oh, yeah. For senator. Yeah. The red baiting. And yeah. the kind of red baiting yeah. he did. Yeah. yeah, and the kind of lies he did with the the the, the, the uh, what the the film and the pumpkin patch and stuff like that that he found. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was he used uh, red baiting to win elections, and he was just a terrible person but in that you respect. Know, most, most politicians, yeah. Too. But hello, by the way, hello to Kevin. You can barely see him. He's in his car driving. Oh, I thought it was ZZ Tops. Oh. <laughs> All I see is a white beard. <laughs> yeah, it's ZZ Top. Hi, ZZ. I was ever crazy. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Yeah, you sure. You sure it's not an elderly woman with gray hair with her legs up? Never mind. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> is that a joke? You went there, Alan. Uh, it just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Alan, for the the. Uh, I'm not going to uh, sleep tonight, Alex. I'm going to have my radio on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll listen to 10 10 wins. Yeah. Know, twisted minds. All politicians are vegans, liars. Is that corrupt? Not all politicians. I think there have been some people who became politicians because they wanted to do good things. I think they were sadly mistaken. Well, you know? I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe I they can. Probably the politicians that are more honest are the local level politicians versus national level. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, there are politicians. I, I, you know, for instance, I, I think Nancy Pelosi's okay. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with Nancy Pelosi. I think she went into it for all the right reasons. Maybe you don't agree with all of the things she did, but True. she was a, she went to help people. Um, um, uh, Barbara Barbara Boxer, what a great. Con uh, the senator she was oh barbara boxer was great. you yeah. liked her yeah i remember that I, I liked her a lot i you know i knew her daughter quite well I you were saying her. that yeah remember you said yeah I remember as you well and and it, wonderful people you know you like barbara boxer didn't you uh uh tom because it's from oh yeah our era. yeah i like yeah. barbara boxer um yeah yeah and um uh, you know tonight actually before i came on to this program i was at a local political event for the berkeley democratic club and uh, we uh, were able to uh, hear from uh, Latifah Simon, who is running to replace uh, uh, Barbara Lee in, in, in Congress. Of course, you know, Barbara Lee right. ran for uh, Senate for the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the open Senate seat and, and failed, you know, but, uh, but she's giving up her, her House seat. So uh, Latifah Simon, who is currently on the uh, Bart board is ready for her. She's dynamic. She's really great. And I think that you'll definitely be, she's def, I know she's going to win. And I think you'll definitely be hearing her name. She's one of those people in the mold of, you know, of, of Barbara Lee and Lee, uh, and uh, Rod Dellums. Uh, she's going to do a lot of good stuff. I, I think our biggest problem with politicians, and you, you talk about them, they're all disgusting and they're vile and so on. They only get vile after they've been in too long. You know? They lose... It depends. It depends. It it depends. depends. Well, like, I, I'm not that hot, hot about Chuck Schumer, for instance. You know? I just don't like the way he takes... The positions he takes on stuff. You know? He's a, he's a liberal, and he's a Democrat, but he's not a good one. You know, not my kind of liberal. And then we got another uh, de Democrat here as a senator. Uh, what's her name? Um, oh. it, 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 what? You know, is I'm that talking. AOC? No, not AOC. AOC, I like. I not think. a senator. Phil hates no, AOC. I no. like AOC because she's just a shit disturber. Yeah, you know? she likes to rattle the cages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm talking about the the senator, the female senator from New York. Who uh, was the one that? Oh, Kristen Gillibrand. Gillibrand. She's the one that forced Al Franken out. Yeah. Now there was no more liberal a senator in Congress or honest senator in Congress yeah. than Al Franken, and she mm -hmm. forced him out because he 
did a little stunt on the he airplane. He did a joke. He didn't even really touch the woman. No, and the woman thought it was a joke. She but went along with he, it. And he's a comedian. And he's a comedian. What did you say? The Republicans that are actually raping and and then got bags of gold. No, that's a that's a Democrat. Never mind. With a gold bullion. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, I, what was she thinking? You know, you had a good, solid left wing senator in Al Franken, a guy, by the way, who I didn't want to have to like as a politician. But as he became a politician and did stuff, he grew on me, yeah. you know. Yeah. And eventually, I, when, the, when the whole thing went down with him, the only thing I was mad at him about was that he quit. He shouldn't yeah, have quit. Yeah, he shouldn't have quit. It should have made him, he, he probably wouldn't have stayed. I mean, they probably wouldn't have been able to force him out. They wouldn't have been able to quit. force him out. And if he had stayed, uh, he could have made a case for what happened yeah. and didn't happen, mm -hmm. you know. But it never got that. He never let it get that far. He no. never let it get to some kind of a discussion of it in the in the uh, Senate. Mm -hmm. So you know, I mean, I and he didn't do anything wrong, really. I mean, it was just a joke. I mean, after all, is not Al Franken's first uh, line of work a comedian? A comedian. Yeah. yeah. And what mm -hmm. he was doing was we almost akin to a sketch on Saturday Night Live. But, you know, me too, boy, They, you also, whatever, I don't know. How are you doing, uh, um, uh, uh, Kevin? Well, I'm doing fine. I'm just heading home from DoorDash. From DoorDash? Uh, yeah, every time I hear that. I'm trying to put my daughter through college, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's set up a GoFundMe page for Kevin. Whenever yeah, I hear, set up GoFundMe for me. Yeah, whenever I hear DoorDash, it just sounds too much like Jordash. It's like it's mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. I used to time the pizza. Right. Which were the ugliest pair of jeans ever created. Oh, that's right. How many pairs of jeans? It was a pretty shitty type. What did you, what'd you think, hey, Kevin? I said it was a pretty shitty day for me today. Really? Why was it a shitty day? Too many food orders. Well, people didn't want to tip tonight. Really? They Isn't that included in the bill? <laughs> oh fuck! People just were just not. T I, I, had a, I did first five deliveries and I got two dollars in tips and I'm driving all over freaking town. You should have ate the food. Uh, <laughs> well, do you do get? And I was delivering. I was delivering to the I house. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do, if you if you're doing DoorDash. Are you just working for tips? No, no. It, they oh. give you a, they give you a, an amount. You know, once you you accept a you accept a delivery amount, and yeah. then whatever tips they give you on top of that. But sometimes the delivery amount is really low. It yeah, could be. Not, it could be. By how far right. you go, and then if they add a tip on, but there's a lot of. Don't it could it could it be that they don't know that they're supposed to tip? They think the delivery fee is what is your tip, basically. You know, they pretty much tell you on there you can tip your driver. Oh really? Yeah. Just say fuck no. I'm not tipping the driver. I always tip the driver when they when they bring delivery. But if I know you, you do. I hold all those pennies. <laughs> I would rather tip them. I tip a lot of people. Then a lot of people tip, tip me. Though. I guess I'll stop talking. No, well, you know, I mean, you can't hear me. I guess. Yeah, man. No, we can hear you. Kind of going in and out. Okay. Well, I'm just pulling into the house right now, so not if you can't hear me, I'm not gonna try and talk. Okay. Uh, well, why don't you call? Uh, yeah. Can you call us back from inside the house? I will use that. Yeah, I'll be in there in about five. Five six minutes. And we 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 go off the air about five or six minutes after that. So do Perfect. it do Let's it anyway. We would love to see you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've just got to log on my stuff here real quick. Okay. okay. Bye bye. See you. In a bit. Okay. Bye. See you later. That's uh, Kevin from his uh, little phone uh, thing. Let me I'll see here. Where do I want to go? I want to. The uh, delivery driver. That is cheap. Yeah. Just like Alex said, I thought it was included in in the thing. Now, the problem with that, if you put it on the bill, then they have to pay taxes on it. Yep. You get I you got to pay taxes. A lot of times, 
right? A lot of times I'll have yeah. a, a pizza delivered and they'll ask me if I want to tip and I'll say I'll tip in cash when the pizza gets here. Yeah, yeah, we get those too. Those are the yeah, best. And that, that way, there's no nobody yeah, knows no record, so they don't have to pay the twenty percent mm -hmm. or whatever the tax. Oh, right. okay. So yeah, it's you still, the DoorDash still reports you as taxes. You get a ten ninety nine when you're done. Okay, I gotta oh, go. Okay, be bye. He'll he'll be back later, maybe. Yeah, but I don't tell later. DoorDash. I just you know, tips says, I didn't I didn't realize he was doing deliveries. You know, when I was doing early days of my talk radio career, do you want to know what the maybe the number one discussion was? If we got into this, it was a whole night mm -hmm. of, of people yelling and screaming. Oh, wow. Was bring up tips. Uh, should really? you tip? What should a tip be? People mm -hmm. are so goddamn cheap. Yeah. They don't what realize do do? 20 that, of the bill, right? that this person that's bringing you your stuff is yeah, trying to earn a living. And tips yeah. are a major important part of that. Yeah. Same thing with per people in uh, uh, waiters in restaurants. Although when you go to Europe, uh, it's included in the price. In other words, there's a 15% added it. on fee for service. And that Wait, all goes to the waiter. What? They pay $2.13 an hour. If they don't get tips, they can't eat. Right, right. Wow. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, I can actually say when I had a paper out, on my area, I did 40 something papers mm -hmm. and they used to tip, but you're right. I used to have a little book and they used to give me like a couple of, like I got so much from the paid daily news themselves, not a lot, yeah. but then everything else was tips. And the best house here was the guy who owned a catering place, the Santushi house. The wife always gave me a good tip. There was a lot of people, they gave you like a dollar for the week. I mean, this is seven days. I used to get pissed off. Sometimes I would give people extra coupons on the Sundays. Mm -hmm. The good tip is I would take the good coupons and, sn and not give them the coupons on the other ones, the food well, coupons. What, get, what gets me is that every Christmas, yeah, uh, I have a major amount of money that I give to my super and to the people who work with him. Uh, I give them each 50 bucks and I give him like about 300 because he's the guy I have to deal with the most. And they're very happy with that. But most of the people in this building don't tip these people at the end of the year. I mean, I tip the post office guy. You know, and I and, too. and some of these I people. Tip, I give a Christmas present to the letter carrier. Yeah, the me letter too. carrier, me I time. I throw twenty bucks to just to say mm -hmm. thank you. I ha the first time I did it, I asked him, "Are you allowed to take tips?" And he said, "Yeah, sure." You of know. course, I'm a government employee. So you know, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, if especially if if somebody well, and, and the people money. then wonder why the super Ooh. when they have a problem in their apartment takes so long to take care of it. Everybody. Whenever I have a problem, he's here in five minutes. Yeah, that, oh. and, and you're being nice yeah. with your appreciative. Well, too. I, I, yes, I want to keep him happy, and quite frankly, he he does right by us, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I've never I've never lived in the building with a super, but I understand the the principle. Does he change? Does he do work for you, and then you pay him for that work during uh, so the year? He will come up. I will give him maybe three hundred dollars at Christmas time. Okay, which I think is decent. That's good. Uh, yeah. And then every time he comes up here and does something like, oh, I've got a plugged toilet or whatever, I hand him twenty bucks. And most of the time he says, no, keep it. I don't. You don't have to do that. You know, because I do tip him every year. And I went, right. no, I want you to have this. It makes me feel better. Now I get and, it. You know, and, right. and so I will, when I ask him to come up and do something, oh, he always knows he's going to get 20 bucks out of me, oh, although yeah. that has nothing to do with it because most of the time he says, no, 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 you don't have to give me that, you know. Yeah. Mm. But, I mean, people in this building who say, oh, he's a horrible guy. He doesn't do anything for me. Well, do you tip him every year? Do you give him and a Christmas bonus? You know, I mean, you got to bribe people. That's the way <laughs> things are done in New York. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. Ask, the, ask, work the, ask, Trump, ask Donald Trump. You know. Oh, he's gonna be burning in flames. I wonder. Though. I wonder if he tipped uh, Stormy Daniels. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if he tips the thing at a small pee, pee. I think. Well, she says his pee pee. This was. Uh, yeah. Was like a a, a small mushroom. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, I laughed at that. I like that. Uh, and, and this was on, drawer, this, this was on Jimmy Kimmel's show, and so Jimmy Kimmel had a board in which they created all these 
well, shall we say, different mushrooms. And he said, could you tell us which one closely approximates his mushroom? And she pointed to the smallest, stubbiest one. He probably took a picture of that and showed it to the judge in court. Yeah. But anyway, so that 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 was... Uh... <laughs> How do you know it's him in question? He's got a small dick. It's him. <laughs> yeah, I recognize. Well, there was something about... Um, I mean, I, I don't know why we're case. getting into this, but there was something yeah. about uh, um, uh, Clinton yeah. uh, that uh, I think somebody, what's her name, uh, Monica Lewinsky Mon had identified. Oh, I remember, yeah. And it was something wrong, a little odd about his penis. Yeah, it was bent or something. Yeah. Or something like that, yeah. It was bent. It was this crooked. is more information than I need to know about yeah, our I, was gonna, I wonder if he had a problem too, maybe. Maybe he had an illness. Well, there you is a thing. Too close to you, Tony. Uh, well, there is a, a there is a thing <laughs> of, a, of a bent penis called Peroni's disease. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's very it's 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 a known thing. You can have it straightened out. Uh, they use a hammer, I think. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> or if you spend seven thousand dollars, you get sound waves pushed through it through yeah. people that fill you. The guys are going to say. Yeah. Money, a new stereo. I'm gonna get a new feed. Did it work for Phil? <laughs> He's trying everything. It sounds like. Yeah. I was finally trying what I told them to try. What? It's called, it's called TriMix. It's a mix that, that's done uh, 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 in the pharmacy. It's three different oh. chemicals, and you inject a little bit in your penis. Oh God! Just crunch. leave me alone. Oh. Just stop. <laughs> just stop. Yeah. It's that's, true. I couldn't even take a needle. I, I don't I care to... about that. But I'm telling you. Well, I mean, you asked. You know, if I if I had a little problem with my penis, which you know at this age, and all the different yeah, prostate I mean, operations I've had, I'm just glad uh, to be alive. I you know, I I have to look down there every now and then to make sure I still have it. Okay, <laughs> but but I had many good years of use, so yeah, I'm not. Say, I'm, you, had, you had a good run. You I said had a good I'm run. I, alive. Yeah. I had a good run. Okay, Kevin came <laughs> back. Let him. I talk. was just happy to keep, Any, keep I, breathing. Anyway, anyway the point the point is that I. Uh, what did I miss? Huh? <laughs> We, 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 we got talking about Trimix. Kevin asked me. Uh, uh, Alex asked it me. It sounds like a Phil, cereal. Trimix. Phil is yeah, using. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And Trimix. Yeah. Look yeah. up Trimix on the internet. We don't need to go. Give it, it to your dog. He gets an erection. Yeah. Right. This is for Phil. Don't I, I just, you know, I just, I would not do that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not. Just scared. Uh, you think there's a reaction to these things? It's got to be not good. Well, huh? I mean, to begin with, I'm not hmm. going to inject my penis myself i mean if i'm going to do it i'm going to have a doctor do it no i think you got to do it yourself alex but you, have you to, don't like... have to do it yourself you could get a doctor to do it but oh, really? quite frankly i don't think it's an ethical form of medicine i, I yeah you know. that, i'm agreeing with you because it's kind of, it doesn't sound right i mean it's if F you shoot it's, yourself it's up fda approved and compounded in a u.s pharmacy yeah really? i don't know what I don't know what the three chemicals are, but I, I have friends of mine for different various medical reasons. They use it. I recommended Phil get it before the seven thousand dollar thing. He chose not to. Now he's using it. Found out it works. There we go. <clears throat> so, do you believe? You no, know what else works is a penis pump. Yeah, no, you know what works. <laughs> what works is the fact that he thinks it's working. Do they make one big enough for you, Charlie? <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. Oh, 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 oh. You, you know, there's a lot to be said for having uh, made yourself believe it works. Oh, and yeah. That's, and that's yeah. enough to help you make it work. Yeah. Well, I see mind over matter. But if well, you got to stick a needle in your penis yeah. before you that do that. That just sounds, I could, I, I don't even, how do you wake up in the morning? That's a good idea. Hey, hey listen, hold guy, hold on okay. a second. Hold on a second. Let me have a word with my penis. Listen, guy, yeah, yeah. Later, <laughs> later on, I will uh, try and, uh, I will try and believe in you. Okay. We'll, we'll work on that later. Mm. Baby anyway. Jesus. <laughs> Phil, Phil is the diabetic and he's used to giving himself injections. So what's the deal, you know? Not well, in that part of your body. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I will inject my abdomen. You long to see yeah, you, you do your right. abdomen for, you know, for uh, your brother no, diabetes. Right. You know, Marjorie shoots herself up uh, for allergies. Oh, uh, she's in her, in her butt. Same, yeah, this is the same guy that 20 years ago spent 
uh, twenty thousand dollars to get more hair on top of this. I couldn't believe they, that. They had to, she had to actually go to uh, some classes at her doctors to learn how to inject herself. Yeah, you know. Really? I don't know if I. I but anyway, what were you, Tom? Yeah. You you were thinking something. Yeah. Tony's quiet for a minute. Kevin came back. We're going to listen to Kevin talk right. about it. Yeah, let's listen to Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kevin. What I do? No, you didn't do anything. <laughs> you, you made no money to no tips. Well, we, were, <laughs> we were talking about the tips earlier, and 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 uh, um, you know, people who don't tip are just assholes. That's all. You yep. know, they don't understand that. Uh, uh, you know, I always my father. Because he was a musician, and oh, yeah, he, musician. he musicians don't get tipped, but he believed in tipping. He believed that if people supply a service to you and they live on those tips, mm. that you have to give them a tip. So I was mm. oh have always been a good tipper, because in honor of my father, you know, I mean, I will tip sometimes. I will even tip when the service was terrible. I mean, Same that, here. yeah, right. right. Yep. Mm. You know, if it's a, if it's a, you know, it just may not be as big of a tip, but it, it's yeah. a tip, you know, because these people are only making, you know, X amount of money and they, they, you mm -hmm. know, rely on the other half for the, mm -hmm. you know, the yeah. extra. And I think that's, yeah. and I, you know, I, I don't care. I take, I took, the, I did the job because I was having fun and doing it for fun, but it, it does bug you a little bit to know that there's, you know, if someone wasn't like I'm out there trying to just make extra money and you know because I'm putting my kid through college so I need that money to go there and I got I mm -hmm. got my own fun money over here yeah so you know but there's people out there that are actually trying to do this for a living mm -hmm. and they do the same thing I mean mm -hmm. I have I, I know certain address I've written down addresses and unfortunately the way you get these orders you don't you don't know where you're going until after you've picked up the order. So you, yeah. you get an offer. It's an offer for, say, $3 mm -hmm. plus whatever it says could be more. And you go, okay, do I want to take the chance of $3 and a $5 tip or whatever? Mm -hmm. I just take them all. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But some people will sit there and go, I'm not going to take the chance. And they'll wait for the $5 order and, you know, calculate it per mile and all that other yeah. stuff and you only got 30 seconds to figure it out yeah, yeah let me so ask, i just take them all and you know it it all washes out but you it's let me interesting ask you in your city how Kevin? many it's kind how, of an interesting social experiment to see that you know what people do and i drive i'll drive 10 12 miles out to a place that you know they're dr sitting in a 2.5 million dollar house and they've ordered dinner and they don't leave a tip. <laughs> let me, yeah, let me yeah. ask you. Let me ask you this quickly. You worked Eddie. tonight. You probably did how many trips? How many orders? What today? Yeah, seven. Seven. Okay. It was a terrible night. How much money did you make out of that? I'll tell you right now. Uh, seven, and I made fifty-one dollars. Fifty-one dollars. That's no, all. That was total. Thirty-three dollars. Uh, yeah. Thirty-three dollars and uh, what do you usually make? DoorDash and seventeen dollars in tips, what, what, and there yeah. was I was on for almost five hours. Wow! Well, that seventeen dollars, so basically, little, about basically, ten bucks an hour. Basically, little less you got than less than the minimum wage. Less yeah. than ten bucks an hour, yeah. Fine. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, anyway, here yeah, you see. make half of what I make as a, a in-home services provider. Yeah. Yeah. But some nights I'll get, you know, and I go the extra mile for some people and I'll get tips after I leave. You know, people say, good job, and they'll drop another five bucks or I yeah. go to a nice house and they'll hand okay. me 10 bucks cash. You know, there's, there's, it goes both ways. Well, the theme is playing. And okay. uh, next time I, I want to hear, I want to hear about what Tom does. And, you know, you, you were talking about your services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. IHSS. In home sur supportive services. Yeah, I want to talk to you about that next time. Yeah. <laughs> next time. Now okay. we, we, we don't have time. Now I got the famous play. Next time. Thank next you, week. thank you, Jeff, for being here. Thank you, uh, 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 Charlie, for being here tonight. Tom Yamaguchi, always great. I tell you that time and time again, and I'm sincere about it. Alan, happy I anniversary. Keep, 
He, he, yes. And mm -hmm. Alan, uh, I keep telling you how much I can't stand you, and I want you to know <laughs> that you can take that to the bank. Uh, no, no problem. No problem. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Tony, thank you, and thank you to Kevin. And if he's if he see you next weekend, if good he night. delivers food to you, you better tip. Okay, exactly. everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Coming up next is, of course, the lovely and attractive Amy Manuel, who does the intersection. It's a fine, good program. Stick around for it and uh, call her, by the way, while you're at it. I'll see you again. Oh, what is it? Monday with the Monday uh, pop-up show at four o'clock on uh, on Facebook. And uh, then we will uh, see you again right back here, same time, same station in life at uh, 1030 Eastern Time. Uh, and if you see her, as always, be sure to tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.